What's up guys, Mitchell Watts with Town & Country TV and today I am in Townsend, Tennessee for the Broncos Super Celebration East. Uh, this is a massive event and this is single-handedly the largest collection of 2021 Broncos ever in one place. It's a pretty cool setup, but today we're going to give you a review of this particular Bronco behind me. This is a 2021, it's a Badlands, but it's a very unique vehicle, very unique spec and I'm going to show that to you in this video. So without further ado, let's go ahead and take a look at the vehicle. By now, I'm assuming you've seen a hundred different walk around videos of the new Bronco. So I'm going to hopefully focus in on a couple things you may not have seen before. Uh, for instance, one thing is going to be this bull bar. As you can see, this is a early pre-production model and it pretty much blocks the entire Bronco logo. Not only that, but it also kind of gets in the way a little bit of the camera. Maybe not, maybe it's cleared, not hundred percent sure, but Ford has re-engineered this bull bar to come up a little bit higher to that way it doesn't block the Bronco name and it definitely won't block, block the camera as well. Now there's a couple of other things I want to showcase to you is you've got your trail sites located right here and as you can see each one of these trail sites has got 150 pound load capacity on it. So what's cool about that is if you've got a rack or something on the top and you want to tie it down you can actually tie it down to here. The other thing that you can do is you can have a wire goes from here to here limb risers that gets the limbs out of the way of the vehicle. So it's a pretty cool setup that they give you that ability. Now, obviously this is going to be the Sasquatch package because it's got the 315-70R17 Goodyears on it. But as I've mentioned to you in a couple of different videos before, this particular Goodyear tire does not have the word Wrangler anywhere on it on the outside. So I think that's a pretty cool setup. Uh, now I want to showcase a couple of other things. Normally you'll see a Badlands sticker on the side of the fender, but this particular vehicle does not have those stickers on it and there's a couple different reasons for that mainly it's just a pre-production prototype and that's going to be a reason but notice this is particularly a two door the you've got the two and the four door are uh, going to be available now i want to showcase a couple of other things josh let's take a look at this windshield real quick i want to show something to you so there's a really cool setup right here where it says accessory ready on the actual windshield what happens is this little cap can pop off and you can actually put your roof rack all the way from the front to the back it's a really nice setup now this one obviously has got the soft top on it so it does not have the the roof rack on it already but it's something that you need to realize now also this particular windshield is not going to be uh, like a jeep a jeep wranglers windshield is flat as can be this particular setup is going to be rounded and the reason for that is obviously going to be aerodynamics but you'll also notice that located right here is going to be the camera in the windshield for the lane keeping setup where this vehicle will actually bounce you into the middle of the lane to make sure that you're not going to drive off the road if you get you know, a little bit tired or what have you. Now, because this particular vehicle is going to be the Lux package, you've actually got a 360 camera. And so as you can see, you've got your cameras that are located right here in the actual mirrors. And I think it's really cool as well because these mirrors, you'll notice, don't move when you open the door. That's right, these mirrors are located actually up against the A pillar. So that way, if you were to take the door off, the mirrors stay and you can still drive street legal well technically they say the uh, off-road use only for removing the doors but nonetheless it's nice that they actually kept the mirrors located right here now let's do this let's take a look a little bit about the actual roof itself now this is going to be one of the optional soft tops that you can get for the bronco and as you can see we open this thing all the way up there is a couple of things that you can do, and I have not, in full disclosure, I've not actually opened this particular soft top, but it is nice because, as you can see, it's not glass. You're not gonna have to worry about shattering anything. And the same thing goes for here, and it's also tinted. So it's a really cool setup. And by the way, this is an accessory that we are going to be selling and pre-selling on our website, TC Customs. I'll have those links down below for all of the Bronco accessories. You can check those out. That um, Most of those will be available at launch time, but we are taking pre-orders for each one of those Bronco accessories. Um, but the only downside that I see specifically of the the soft top is you can see you can you might even be able to pop it open I don't want to do it because it's you know pre-production and it's also not mine but I suspect it's going to be very similar to how like the Jeep Wrangler if you kind of there's really no way to truly secure the inside of a soft top so that's going to be the only downside but that's not a downside of the Bronco that's just a downside of a of a soft top if you will now located in the back as you can see you've got your your storage bags for your roof and for your doors 
but I want to take these out so you can specifically see how much space or lack of space you get in the back of a two-door Bronco. And as you can compare that to the four-door video that we made not long ago, it is a good bit of difference between the two and the four-door as far as cargo capacity. Now, something that you need to realize there is that is the reason that you can take the doors with you in the four-door, but you can't take the doors with you in a two-door. I mean, maybe you could, but it's not set up or made that way. Looking at your full-size spare tire you've got a couple things going on you've got your third uh, brake light going on you also happen to have your reverse camera uh, this is a part of your 360 camera so there's four cameras all the way around the vehicle and that's what stitches it together to give you that 360 bird's eye view of what's going on around you but notice down here you actually have your towing capability is what Ford calls it on the accessories or the options this particular setup is only rated to tow up to 3,500 pounds uh, but please verify your specific spec can tow that much because you don't want to get into issues really that is designed to towing small you know uh, i guess uh jet skis and small things like that or maybe even if you wanted to have like a, a a hitch mounted bike rack or what have you it's a really cool setup that you can do there so let's do this let's take a look uh inside the cab of the vehicle and showcase to you a lot of the technology that i'm excited to see all right now let's take a look at the inside of the vehicle but before we do that i want to showcase one of my favorite features about the bronco and that is the modularity as you can see the fender itself has actually got easily removable bolts the design behind this whole setup is if you know you're going to be going on some hardcore trail riding and you're concerned about scratching your fenders up you actually have the ability with just a couple of small hand tools remove the fenders and also the fender flares it's a really cool setup that ford has done so coming on into the inside let's talk a little bit about what's going on now this particular setup i'm going to go ahead and oh yeah i got the keys baby <laughs> I hope I don't go to jail today. Uh, no, I'm kidding. I'm not going to drive it. And, and a huge thank you to uh, Ford and the Bronco Nation, uh, which are two separate entities. But thanks to, to both of, the, of you guys, we greatly appreciate you giving us access to these Broncos. And uh, hopefully uh, you guys are um, happy with the content that we're able to put out for it. Now, I will tell you, though, with that being said, that nobody is paying us to make these videos. And so these opinions are of my own. All they've done is really given me access. Now, because it is 41 degrees, outside and that's another nice thing about this 12 inch touchscreen I'm going to turn my heated seats on as Josh has already done his I'm going to turn my heat up to that and hey you know what even heated steering wheel so that showcases to you a couple of different things about this particular Bronco this is the Lux package now what I'm so excited about is because it is a Lux package really because it is a uh, a high package or above you get the 12 inch touchscreen now because when we put it into reverse you can see you've got that bird's eye view the 360 degree camera so there's the one camera located under each one of those mirrors that we showed you earlier you've got the camera located in the front and the camera located in the rear it all stitches itself together to give you this bird's eye view it's a really cool setup and a good use of technology now you also have the ability to zoom in if you're backing up to the trailer hitch you can make sure that you're doing that perfectly every single time now you can even come in here and alter what kind of view you're looking at so if you wanted to look at a 180 degree rear view you can absolutely do that so it's really cool how they have set up the actual infotainment system of this Lux version now this particular setup also happens to have the Bang & Olufsen premium audio system yet another thing that is going to be included on that specific Lux package so pretty cool setup now, what I want to showcase to you next is going to be something that Josh was just pointing out to you. And because this is a higher version of this, this Bronco, you'll notice they actually put a power plug up here in the dashboard. Why in the world would Ford put a power plug up here? There's a couple different reasons. If you wanted to power a radar detector, you wanted to power a dash cam, which I wouldn't recommend you doing it there. I'd recommend you hardwiring it in. Um, but nonetheless, you also happen to have an accessory that you can purchase that goes into these particular slots, and they call the, the bring your own device rail. The idea behind that is if you're off-roading, you can actually mount your GoPro to, the, to this device rail. It looks forward, and you can power those devices utilizing this USB-C and USB-A port. I think it's a really, really cool setup. Now, 
as I mentioned to you earlier, this particular Bronco is not actually badged with the Badlands anywhere on it. But the way that we know that this thing is a Badlands is for two reasons. You've got the orange accents all the way throughout the vehicle. And the other thing is going to be this sway bar disconnect. So as I press the button, you'll see that the sway bar disconnect, it reconnects over 20 miles an hour. So right now it is actually disengaged. And so that way, if we were automatically, you know, flexing the vehicle out, it would automatically um, allow a lot more flex and when you start driving faster than 20 miles an hour the thing automatically re-engages itself now what i like about that sway bar disconnect more than anything is the fact that it is completely usable while the vehicle is articulated so the jeep wrangler has a similar feature the downside to their version is that it has to be on level ground before you disengage that that sway bar so it's a it's pretty cool that ford gives us this ability to to do this while it's flexed out if you're curious about how the sway bar disconnect works in the new Ford Bronco, which by the way, right now that is only available on the Badlands in first edition, but this is actual a setup that showcases how this particular setup works. So this is a typical sway bar with the exception of this component right here. This is the actual disconnect mechanism. And what happens is you've got each one of these ends is tied into the front of the vehicle to make sure that it doesn't roll. It's a sway bar, if you will. And what happens is when you press the button in inside the cab, if you're going less than 20 miles an hour, it will automatically disconnect and it allows these things to pivot as you can see right here. Okay. Now, when you go back and have it locked back in, when you're doing on road driving or when you speed up above 20 miles an hour, you don't have the ability to twist it. That is pretty much all of my way it is locked back in and that's what's so cool about this setup is not only that it disconnects but it naturally disconnects and naturally connects so you can literally be flexed out completely on a vehicle or on a rock the vehicle can be flexed out on a rock and you hit that button and watch what happens it automatically lets go when you hit the button when you locate it's i think it's fantastic technology that ford's put into use and i can see this going a long long way in uh, applications even outside the bronco Located up here, a couple of other buttons, front locker, rear locker, trail turn assist, and then also your traction control button, all located up here. Now, if you've seen our prior video where we did the Sync 4 12-inch touchscreen, uh, we did a video that showcases all of the ins and outs and the features of this particular 12-inch touchscreen, almost everything is going to be the exact same. Now, there's going to be a couple of differences as far as um, you've got some, some trail maps and things like that, uh, but as I've already mentioned to you, uh, Apple CarPlay Android Auto comes with this 12-inch touchscreen. So it's a pretty cool setup there. Now, the other uh, cool little Easter egg that you've got located right here is a Ford Bronco badge. And based on the way that they've got this thing bolted up, it's designed to look like an actual front end of a Bronco. So yeah, pretty cool stuff there. Ford's done a really good job of making sure that they're building a vehicle that is not only nostalgic, but also brand new in this year model. And it's just, they've done a really, really good job. Now you also notice, this is something I noticed the other day when I was driving a Bronco, um, is that you've got this little location right here. This is going to be your front airbag. And as you can tell, because this vehicle it does have a removable top, you still have to have your airbag. So it's still got the airbags in the seats. You've still got uh, airbags up in the side. Uh, which is going to be a little bit difficult to showcase that to you right now but nonetheless there you go now let's take a look up top the first thing i want to showcase to you are these auxiliary switches as you can see they all light up and it's pretty cool because ford pre-wires a lot of the accessories that they think you might need um, and it's already got power to them specifically so it's a pretty cool setup that you have right there now because we are in a soft top i want to showcase to you a pretty cool functionality for that soft top now the first thing that you'll see is you've got these little pockets right here here. So if you wanted to store some stuff, you can, you have that ability to, um, so just an extra nice little feature, but you've got these two little latches located right here. And all you have to do is push it up. And as you can see, I'm sitting in it and I probably need to be standing out to, to push this all the way back, but it's pretty cool how easy it is just to push that top back. So, you know, I, I was really kind of thinking I was going to stick with the hard top only, but now that I have seen this functionality, the soft top, I think this might be something that I need to keep for the summertime. And that way I can just drop it back anytime I want to and not have to worry about it. But you know, I'm a little bit conflicted there, but it's a really cool setup uh, as far as the soft top is concerned. 
I want to talk about one of the coolest technologies in the actual Bronco, and that's going to be the GOAT modes. Because this is a high-end version, you've got this GOAT mode where if you simply turn this, you can actually drop it into the specific mode that you want. If you want to go to mud ruts, I tell you what, let's just do this. Let's go into rock crawl mode. As you can see, it's located right there. What's going to end up happening? It automatically shifts it into four low. It automatically turns off the uh, sway bar disconnect, um, and it also turns off your traction control. And notice how it also locks in your rear differential as well now the other cool part is is because i'm in rock crawl mode it's looking at the front camera only so that way you can see what i'm about to get into and the even the best part about this is if you're concerned about maybe slicing your tires on a rock you can come in here hit the button and you can exactly see where your tires are located in proportion to you off-roading this is a I mean, absolutely technology that will make it a lot easier for people to learn how to wheel and how to off-road. I'm very excited about this. Next up on the technology list, I want to talk about your driver assist feature. So as you can see right here, there's a couple things going on. You've got your adaptive cruise control, and as you can see, you simply tap this button, and then you can set your speed, and then it'll maintain a safe distance between you and the car in front of you. Now, it's hard to find any information from Ford directly, but from my contacts, they are telling me without a shadow of a doubt that this vehicle, if it has adaptive cruise control, also comes with forward calls stop and go, meaning that if the car in front of you comes to a complete stop, this vehicle will come to a complete stop and hold you there until it's time to go and move on from there. And then you simply hit the resume button and it'll automatically keep you up to speed. Now, this vehicle also happens to have lane keeping assist, and that is simply a feature that will keep you bouncing you back and forth in between to make sure you stay stay in the lane, meaning that if you start to drift off the road, the car will kind of bounce you back in that lane to help keep you from getting in an accident. It's not the same as lane centering, so I'm, I wish the Bronco had that feature, but I understand you, you know, beggars can't be choosy or what have you. Now, the other thing I want to kind of showcase to you guys is actually in here. Now, we've been sitting in here with the heat on because it's freezing outside for quite a bit of time to make this video, but I'm curious to see what the actual fuel economy is of this vehicle. Now, keep Keep in mind, nothing has been um, has been released to the world, but this particular one is 15.7, and as I've already mentioned to you, I have been sitting in this thing with it running for a good amount of time. Now, the other thing we can do is go back to this other menu to the trip one and see over 579 miles, they've gotten 15.6, and let's see what trip two shows. 15.7 over 633 miles and this whole car has got 1500 miles on it so you know keep in mind that the fuel economy is going to range and you've also got because this is a show going vehicle it does sit a lot without actually being driven so that's something you, it's going to affect the fuel economy because i'm a glutton for punishment i'm going to show you what it looks like to get in the back seat of a two-door bronco and uh you know go ahead and leave the the funny comments uh, yeah, it's going to be entertaining, but basically you've got this little latch right here You slide it forward and it automatically gives you the ability to get in the back of the vehicle So now let's see how easy it is for a six foot three man to get in that back seat Okay Okay, so it's possible All right And Okay, all right, so um yeah, I've got plenty of headroom, but um, Josh, hand the camera to me. I need to show guy, show you guys exactly what my legroom situation looks like. Um, yeah, that is not comfortable. <laughs> and the, okay, that's a good point. Josh uh, said the seats are all the way back. Josh, let's uh, let you see exactly what kind of space you have. All right, not bad, not bad. Now that is manageable. So Josh, how tall are you? Six foot one. So he's six foot one. I'm six foot three. You can't, and I, my, my, now my knees are not touching. You know, it's it's actually doable. But if you're going to be doing a lot of getting in and out of that back seat, you're going to want to probably consider the four door. But actually, with the seat scooted forward, I'm actually a lot more impressed with the back seat leg room than I thought I was going to be. All right, Josh, better not video me trying to get out of this stupid thing. Okay, okay. this is going to be interesting. Okay, Josh, I told you not to video me. Well, there you go. Um, 
not a bad little setup. Like I said, getting in and out of that back seat is not exactly my favorite thing, but with that seat scooted forward, it's not that bad. Uh, but once again, I'm probably gonna be opting for that four door. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. If this is your first time here, make sure you are subscribed to the channel with that bell notification turned on. We've got a lot of videos coming to you guys from this specific event, and I'm excited to show those to you. If you haven't already done so, make sure you check out tccustoms.com forward slash giveaway. We are giving away a Bronco Sport. And if you want more information about that, that'll all be linked down in that description below. And uh, yeah, hit us up with some comments. Any questions you guys got about the Bronco specific or really just anything in general, make sure to hit those down in the comments. Thank you so much for watching this video and have a great day. Peace.